Leaving the comfort of my parents' house after 28 years to settle into my first home was quite a shock. It was July 2022, just a stone's throw from my parents' place, which meant we weren't too far apart. I had hoped for peaceful nights without being stirred by my dad's restless midnight walks up and down the stairs. He's a chronic insomniac, always up for a sip of water or a bathroom visit, disrupting my sleep due to my light slumber inherited from him. The new house had a straightforward layout, a small, unfinished basement, the first floor with a living room, kitchen, bathroom, and dining area, and an upstairs hosting three bedrooms and another bathroom. The early days involved setting up furniture, arranging things, and slowly making the house feel like home. About a week into settling in, with most of the moving complete, I felt comfortable in my new surroundings. One Sunday night, as sleep evaded me despite taking some melatonin and a sleeping pill, I found myself wide awake. An eerie noise from outside my room jolted me awake from a deep dream. The footsteps I heard were familiar, mimicking my dad's nightly movements up the stairs. Yet, something felt off. I tried to dismiss it as a remnant of my dream, but the sounds persisted. Fully alert, I called out for my dad. Silence echoed back. Slowly, I ventured out into the hallway, flipping on lights as I moved, my heart thumping hard in my chest. As I reached the stairway, a chilling sight awaited me. A masked intruder stood at the bottom, staring up at me. Reality hit hard. This was no imagined noise. There was an intruder in my home. Without thinking, I yelled, commanding them to leave, my voice wavering with fear. Surprisingly, the intruder turned and left through the front door. I rushed downstairs, locking the door behind them. As I dialed my dad in panic, the back door slammed shut. A second intruder remained inside. Shaken and scared, I phoned the police, my hands trembling as I recounted the incident. Responding officers arrived swiftly, bombarding me with questions about the burglary. I struggled to provide accurate details. I couldn't describe them or the direction they fled. The only entrance they used was a small kitchen window, and it didn't seem like they took anything valuable from the house. Experiencing a home invasion, something you only hear about on the news, was a dreadful reality check, especially just after moving into my first house. I wish I could have aided the police in identifying the intruders better, but the entire experience left me wary. Nowadays, a knife rests beside my bed as I struggle to find comfort in my new home. In my late twenties, the opportunity to rent my own place finally knocked. The house had character, but as I moved in, the landlord assured me he had changed the locks post eviction of the previous tenant. Eager to make it mine, I pushed aside any nagging concerns. Dreams of renovating the basement fueled my initial excitement. As I measured the area, an oddity caught my eye, a patch of wall that seemed freshly plastered. My curiosity led to a concealed hole, harboring a peculiar handwritten journal inscribed in an unfamiliar language. Intrigued yet unable to decipher it, I left it on the table, thinking it a mere curiosity. Nightfall brought an unexpected unease. Strange noises pierced the tranquility of my home, unsettling me from slumber. The sound of pacing footsteps outside my bedroom window persisted. It was disconcerting, reminiscent of someone pacing back and forth. Yet, when I investigated, the silence was eerie. Nothing stirred in the stillness of the night. An unshakable sense of foreboding lingered, keeping me wide awake. Fearing the worst, I decided to fortify my safety and installed cameras around the house. The living room camera notified me in the dead of night, a notification that turned my blood cold. The footage revealed a man, his eyes fixated on the camera as though he knew I was watching. His presence seemed more than a mere break-in. It felt personal, calculated. Panic-stricken, I rushed to my bedroom and secured the door. Every creak, every sound set my heart racing. When the intruder advanced, instinct drove me to flee through the window, sprinting into the darkness and dialing emergency services. In the shadows, hiding behind trees, I monitored the live feed. My heart raced as I glimpsed the man through the camera, clutching the strange journal. A haunting glare aimed directly at the lens. 
His eerie connection to the cryptic journal unsettled me profoundly, heightening the sense of danger. The police arrived promptly, but the intruder had vanished without a trace. There were no clues, just chilling footage and inexplicable fear that lingered in the air. Terrified by the unexplained occurrences and the man's uncanny link to the mysterious journal, I couldn't pack my bags fast enough to abandon that house and find sanctuary elsewhere. A few years ago, I moved to a new city on the East Coast for work. I couldn't visit the place before moving in, but since I was renting, there wasn't much risk. The movers came in mid-September and unloaded my stuff at the house. Luckily, the landlord let them in, as I wasn't arriving until the following week. Finally, on a Monday evening, I reached the house and saw it in person for the first time. It was a mess with boxes everywhere and furniture scattered around, but the house itself seemed okay. It was laid out quite differently. One side had the kitchen and living room, and the other had a long hallway leading to the bedrooms and bathrooms. Tired from the move, I went to the master bedroom, set up the bed, turned off the lights, and went to sleep. During the night, I woke up to a strange noise. I thought it might be something wrong with the house, so I got up to check. As I approached the bedroom door, the noise stopped. I turned on the hallway light, but there was nothing unusual except for some footprints around the boxes. I assumed it was from the movers and went back to bed. I couldn't sleep though because I kept thinking about the noise stopping suddenly. I dozed off and woke up to a loud thud, followed by someone running down the hallway. Scared, I saw my bedroom door wide open and footsteps leading to my bed. I rushed to find out who was there, but they were gone, leaving behind only hasty footprints. I called the police, locked myself in the bathroom, and waited until they arrived. Strangely, they found no signs of a break-in except for the footprints. I checked everything, but nothing seemed missing. The strange part was, the landlord quickly offered to let me break the lease if I kept quiet about the incident. At first, I thought it was to keep people interested in renting, but now I'm not so sure. There might be more to this house than meets the eye. In the quiet, unassuming town of Waycross, Georgia, Cheryl and I embarked on a fresh chapter, having just moved into our dream house nestled amidst serene woods. But the tranquility dissolved into an eerie tale that unfolded in those first unsettling nights. Our quaint abode, a haven promising the joys of adopting a dog and raising children, quickly transformed into a chilling theater of the inexplicable. Nights seemed still, yet the air was pregnant with an eerie discomfort that crept upon us. It began on a seemingly ordinary Monday night, the humdrum life of unpacking becoming a ritual. As bedtime embraced us, an unsettling symphony from the backyard shattered the tranquility. Vintage music, staticky and distant, permeated our haven. Its tune, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf, a nostalgic melody, morphed into a haunting echo, piercing the night. Intrigued and unnerved, I ventured into the darkness, hoping to confront a prankster. But to my dismay, the music emanated not from our yard, but the encompassing woods. Its source eluded me, the song dwindling into an eerie silence, leaving behind an air thick with foreboding. A night passed, and the sinister melody revisited us. Tiptoe through the tulips, echoed hauntingly, threading fear into our souls. With each verse, our unease amplified, the melody casting sinister shadows on our nascent home. A resolve to confront the unknown overcame me, a bid to establish authority. As I ventured into the night, an abandoned radio, the elusive source of terror, revealed itself. Yet, as I triumphantly grasped the instrument, terror seized me. Cheryl's frenzied screams shattered the night, warning of looming figures lurking in the woods, my heart raced as I turned to face the chilling tableau. Three dark, looming figures, silent sentinels, etched against the night. Panic surged through me, and in a frenzied sprint, I bolted back to the safety of our haven, slamming the door shut. The arrival of the authorities offered a fleeting sanctuary, a temporary respite from the nightmarish ordeal. In their wake, 
our home stood in haunting silence, an unnerving tranquility hinting at the unknown. Weeks have passed, yet the specter of that night still haunts us. The chilling melody ceased, and the figures faded into the darkness, but their lurking presence lingers, a reminder of a ghastly encounter that robbed us of our newfound peace. In our solemn solitude, we remain vigilant, capturing every flicker of movement, fearing the sinister return of the unknown figures. Our haven, now shrouded in fearful anticipation, stands as a testament to an inexplicable horror that lingers, waiting in the shadows to resurface. The day we moved into our new house, the excitement in my son's eyes was palpable, especially when he spotted the treehouse nestled at the edge of our backyard. Its allure captivated him immediately, becoming his treasured spot for adventures and imaginative play. During the first few weeks, our lives settled into a comforting routine. However, a disquieting atmosphere began to pervade our household, signaling a shift from the initial bliss. The initial unsettling incident occurred during a moonlit night when the hushed tranquility was abruptly disrupted by faint noises emanating from the kitchen. Startled, my wife and I exchanged concerned glances, both sensing a strange disturbance. Moments later, the distinct sliding sound of the glass door reverberated through the house. Our hearts raced in unison as we hastily investigated, only to find an eerily vacant backyard under the faint glow of the moon. Brushing it off, as perhaps a figment of imagination or a trick of the night, we tried to resume our regular routine. However, the tranquil facade began to crack when groceries started mysteriously disappearing. Our son casually attributed it to Brandon, a name he claimed belonged to a friend from the neighborhood. Bewildered, we dismissed it as a child's imaginative musings, oblivious to the foreboding portents lurking beneath. Nightmares took root when the eerie sliding door incidents became frequent. Once, twice, and then a third time, each instance bearing an unsettling sense of foreboding. However, the disturbing incidents took a terrifying turn when a masked figure, brandishing a knife, appeared at the door. Panic surged as we sought refuge in the bedroom, frantically calling the authorities. Amid the chaos and fear, my son, with an innocent yet chilling demeanor, casually mentioned Brandon in connection to the unlocked door and the missing groceries. His matter-of-fact explanation about Brandon's alleged residence in the treehouse left us unnerved. As the assailant relentlessly assaulted our bedroom door, our family's terror reached a crescendo. Our screams pierced the night, mingling with the furious attempts of the intruder to breach our sanctuary. The desperate amishers to keep him at bay, the phone call to the authorities, and the fear that permeated the air rendered that night indelible in our memories. After the ordeal, we sought solace away from our newly acquired but haunted home. The unsettling presence of someone residing in the treehouse, coupled with the intruder's relentless pursuit, shattered our sense of security. The trauma loomed large, casting a shadow over our lives. Ultimately, the emotional scars and haunting memories pushed us to relocate to a different house, seeking refuge in a place where the specter of terror didn't lurk around every corner. The unnerving episode left an indelible mark, teaching us to be vigilant and to trust our instincts in the face of lurking danger. It was a rash decision, but the allure of independence outweighed my financial readiness, prompting me to leap from my parents' nest prematurely. Months of scouring through listings for apartments and potential roommates finally led me to a Facebook post about a spare room for rent in my neighborhood. The house was a two-bedroom dwelling, and the landlord, who went by the name Terry, offered the second room. I agreed to a slew of house rules, which seemed sensible enough, and arranged to inspect the room on the same day. Upon arrival, the house appeared immaculate, almost too perfect, with flawless decor that made it seem like a display home. Yet, Terry was odd, a discordant blend of his late twenties and an offbeat demeanor. Ignoring my Eunice, I was too fixated on the idea of freedom to care about the oddities. Weeks went by, and Terry was an elusive presence, working late and hardly seen around the house. However, his vanishing act became more pronounced, 
with his sporadic appearances only at odd hours in the dead of night. Then, one eerie night, when weeks had passed without sighting Terry, I was jolted awake by furious pounding on my door. A disheveled Terry stood there, dripping with sweat, his voice a venomous bark commanding me to stay locked in my room. Slamming the door shut, he descended downstairs. Cautiously, I emerged from my room after his departure. Traces of muddy footprints across the kitchen floor led to the locked garage, where I could hear sounds of dragging, heavy and ominous. Before I could investigate further, instincts urged me to flee the eerie scene. I dashed to my car, dialing the police on the way out. Upon police arrival, Terry had vanished, leaving no trace but a sanitized house. Shockingly, it was unveiled that Terry wasn't the property owner, but a sham landlord, and my occupancy in the house was unauthorized. His true identity remained a mystery, a haunting enigma that lingered long after the incident. Reflecting on the sinister encounter, it became evident that Terry had some malevolent intent that night, compelling me to ponder the chilling question. What could he have had in store for me? The frightful realization gnawed at me, leaving me grateful for narrowly escaping the clutches of an unknown terror. When I first moved into my current house, the neighbors next door, in a typical neighborly fashion, introduced themselves. They were nice enough folks, which is always a good start, my house, sitting by a canal, was a dream come true. I'd always wanted a waterfront property to dock my boat conveniently in my own backyard. However, the downside of this idyllic setting was the lack of privacy. The house across the canal was an eyesore, seemingly neglected and not well maintained, which irked me whenever I glanced across the water from my yard. For the initial two weeks, the house across the canal appeared uninhabited. Every night I'd glance out of my window before retiring, only to find it enveloped in darkness. I started to think it might be a vacation home or something. But one night, everything changed. It was the day I had my brother help me with the boat. As I closed the blinds before bed, I noticed a single light on in the house across the canal. A man stood in the room, peering out, his gaze fixated. It was odd, given that the place seemed vacant before. The man, clad in sweats and a long-sleeved shirt, appeared to be in his fifties, with a mop of grayish hair. He seemed to be staring at the yard, perhaps in my direction, though it was too dark to be sure. Over the next few days, I'd often see him standing there, watching me. When friends visited to go out on the boat, he wasn't around. Still, I couldn't shake off the unease whenever I ventured into my own backyard, feeling his eyes on me from across the canal. A few nights later, while trying to sleep, I heard noises in my backyard. A creeping sense of dread washed over me. Someone was on the deck below. When a loud crash echoed from downstairs, I raced down to find a shattered window. A brick lay on the floor, evidence of an unwelcome visitor. Panic-stricken, I called 911, fearing an intruder might still be inside. Thankfully, the house was empty. The brick had been thrown through the window from the outside. I was certain it was the man from across the canal who'd been eyeing me since I moved in. The police investigated, only to find out that the house across the canal had been foreclosed and remained unoccupied for months. There was no possible explanation for the man's presence. Terrified, I secured my home with cameras and heightened security measures. The next morning, I ventured into the deserted house across the canal. The locked front door gave way to an unlocked back entrance. As I stepped inside, an unsettling silence enveloped me. Suddenly, a faint noise from upstairs startled me, sending me scurrying back to my house in terror. I promptly installed cameras around my home and fortifications to keep my space secure. Strangely, I never saw the man again after that chilling incident. To this day, I wonder about the mysterious figure across the canal, his motives, and the unsettling events that unfolded. Thankfully, things have been quiet ever since. As the clock struck midnight, I found myself engrossed in an intense round of online poker, reveling in the solitude of my new house. However, an unexpected disturbance startled me from my focused trance. A chilling scream pierced through the veil of my headphones. 
Abruptly pulling them off, I strained to discern the source of the spine-tingling wail. There it was again, a haunting shriek echoing in the stillness of the night. Curiosity and concern intertwined as I navigated towards the window, hoping to dispel the eerie aura that enveloped the darkness. Yet, the inky night veiled any visible sign of the source behind the unsettling screams that intermittently pierced the silence. Assuming someone had alerted the authorities, I retired to bed, the echoes of those cries lingering in my thoughts. Nightfall descended again, and the echoes of the previous night were mere whispers until, inexplicably, the chilling screams resurfaced, louder and distressingly closer. The familiarity of the wail drew me back to the same window, my eyes locking onto a sight that froze my blood. In the dim glow of my yard's lamplight stood an elderly man, his weathered visage contorted in an agonizing scream directed towards the oblivion. His unsettling cries seemed detached from reality, as if resonating from a world beyond. Shivers ran down my spine as I watched the peculiar scene unfold before me. Fearing for my safety and unable to decipher his intentions, I dialed emergency services, watching as the police approached the man, his eyes fixated on my window, a chilling sense of awareness veiled in his aged gaze. Their subsequent interaction with the man provided little insight. The officers could only surmise he was under the influence or grappling with an unclear mental state. His cryptic words about something wrong with my house only added to the perplexity. Puzzled and somewhat unnerved, I cooperated with the police, providing information about my recent move and the unfamiliarity with the man. The night lingered with an eerie quietude, only to be disrupted again by the same unsettling wails on subsequent nights. With a rising sense of unease, I glimpsed the man standing in my yard once more, his haunting screams growing more hauntingly familiar. Losing no time, I summoned the authorities again, and this time, the police acted decisively, taking the intruder into custody. Later revelations painted a somber picture, a diagnosis of dementia. The man, devoid of caregivers, wandered aimlessly, drawn inexplicably to my residence. The authorities intervened, relocating him to a facility where he could receive the care and supervision he direly needed. Grateful for the resolution, I grappled with a lingering sense of disquiet. The echoes of those haunting screams reverberated in my mind, leaving an indelible mark of unease. The inexplicable nature of the events left me pondering the thin veil between reality and the unknown. Yet, I found solace in the hope that the man, now in capable hands, would find the aid and solace he sought, while the echoes of those harrowing nights gradually faded into the past. Under the guise of moonlit tranquility, the shadows in my mother's inherited farmhouse concealed secrets I was yet to fathom. After her passing, the choice to inhabit the desolate abode loomed, promising solitude and frugality, but harboring unforeseen perils that encroached upon my fragile sense of security. An echo from the past reverberated as the rumbling of an old pickup truck invaded the desolate landscape in the dead of night. Its arrival, not once but twice, struck discord in the solace of isolation that enveloped the homestead. Initially dismissed as an improbable navigational error, the reappearance of the truck, its headlights ominously extinguished, triggered an inexplicable alarm within me. The undulating cornfields whispered secrets obscured by the thick veils of darkness, hinting at the malevolence lurking within the vast expanse. Then, as the world slept, I found myself plunged into the eerie familiarity of an untold horror. The truck returned, driven by an enigmatic silhouette that traversed the desolate path towards my secluded dwelling, cloaked in the deep shroud of the witching hour. As the figure silently approached the porch, my apprehension amplified, feeding the gnawing sensation of dread seeping through the very pores of my existence. His ominous presence, a haunting manifestation, bore a foreboding warning that pierced the veil of my restless vigil. In silence, I beheld the strange spectacle unfold, gripping the doorframe in dread as the visitor remained wordless, contemplating an eerie stillness. His inscrutable intent, palpable in the air, 
lingering in a foreboding silence that heralded a sense of impending doom. With disconcerting brevity, he retreated into the obscurity of the night, leaving an uneasy disquiet that pervaded the desolate premises. Disturbed and disoriented, I sought solace in the sanctuary of sleep, haunted by the surreal encounters that defied logic. The reverie of dusk was shattered by an ominous knock, a prelude to a sinister intrusion that ruptured the fragile tranquility of the night. Alarmed by the unexpected sound, I beheld the chilling spectacle, a jar door, an unwelcome invitation to an ominous presence. Cautiously ascending the stairs, dread pulsed through my veins as eerie footfalls reverberated ominously within the hollow confines of the homestead. Fear paralyzed me in a silent vigil cloaked in the darkness of a clandestine refuge. The intruder prowled the house with eerie precision, an unwelcome trespasser in the sanctuary I sought solace in. Silent and vigilant, I sheltered in the recesses of a dimly lit room, apprehension shadowing every breath as I beseeched the authorities for aid. The oppressive silence was interrupted by his departure, a retreating specter vanishing into the vast expanse of the unending fields, evading the clutches of justice. The authorities' futile quest for evidence mirrored my own inability to decipher the cryptic intentions of this mysterious intruder. Despite the dense veil of darkness that cloaked the deeds of that ominous night, the lingering fear and unresolved enigma shrouded the farmhouse. A looming threat, unseen and unexplained, prompted the abandonment of that forsaken abode, its secrets buried within the folds of the desolate landscape. The haunted echoes of that fateful night, wrought with trepidation and unanswered questions, still reverberate through the corridors of my consciousness, leaving a residual fear that lingers, a chilling reminder of a malevolent presence that traversed the boundaries of time and space. I, a 30-year-old woman, recount a chilling event that unfolded in the heart of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It was a late November when my fiancé and I made a significant investment in a boating company, prompting our relocation from L.A. to Florida to oversee the business, settling into our new abode, a spacious, single-story home primed for a family. Life in Florida started off as expected, with its frequent rains and the almost tropical climate during summer. Adapting to our new surroundings went smoothly, until an unsettling incident unraveled the calm. A day when I was confined to our home, sick with the flu while my fiancé attended to office duties. In the midst of rummaging through half-unpacked boxes in our kitchen, an inexplicable unease clutched at me, a sensation of being watched, an instinctive alertness that sent shivers down my spine. Turning towards the sliding glass door, my eyes widened in shock. A figure, shrouded in black, prowled our vegetable garden. His actions, peculiar and suspicious, as he poured some mysterious substance around the plants. My initial urge was to call my fiancé, but fear of worrying him, and knowing his penchant for taking matters into his own hands, forced me to dial the authorities. The password-secured gate remained unbreached, implying the intruder had scaled the fence. Panic crept in as I retreated to my room, locking the door while fervently praying for safety. Minutes dragged like eternity, until the distant wails of police sirens offered a glimmer of hope. Observing from my window, I witnessed a scene that rattled me to the core. Four officers restraining the young intruder, a teenager who stood almost passive, accepting his capture. An eerie revelation emerged as the police uncovered traces of liquid mercury, the substance the intruder had been surreptitiously sprinkling in our garden. A chilling realization struck me. Had I consumed those tainted vegetables, the outcome might have been catastrophic. As I conversed with the authorities, a shocking revelation surfaced. The trespasser was our next-door neighbor's son, an unsettling revelation that shattered the facade of our tranquil neighborhood. His parents, overwhelmed with remorse, sought forgiveness, explaining their son's supposed innocence. Disconcerted by their defense, my fiancé and I felt compelled to press charges, for the safety of ourselves and the community. The teenager was apprehended, facing a decade-long sentence according to his anguished parents. In a disturbing turn, the neighbor's parents ardently professed their son's innocence, a plea that failed to resonate with us. 
haunted by the sinister intentions lurking behind their son's actions. The unsettling incident had etched an indelible mark, leaving us rattled and unnerved, pondering over the terrifying possibility of what could have been and relieved for having narrowly evaded an unforeseen tragedy.